up sub flappers welcome back to another video and yes we do have hu tao looking down upon us very condescendingly in a very suggestive way however rest assured nothing crazy is going to happen you are not indeed laying in a coffin because today we are going to be talking about ways to actually lift your spirits up yes if you are a relative beginner if you are a newer player let's say you're under ar 40 ish maybe even under ar 45 give or take i hope that this video is going to find you well and it's going to be able to help you prepare yourselves for what's about to come in the near future so let's get ourselves up to eye level so it doesn't look like hu tao is about to nail you shut in a coffin shipping you off for christmas even though I think many people uh, would actually have that on one of their uh, dying wish lists. But today, let's focus on the living. Let's focus on the future because there's much to live for in the lifespan of Genshin Impact, especially within the next patch or two. We're going to be getting uh, essentially life itself uh, in the Dendro element as well as Sumeru. So what can a beginner player, a newer player really focus on right this very moment to make sure that they don't get left behind? by people who have been playing the game for months on end and before we go any further my name's walrus i know it's erotic walrus on the channel but i go by walrus just call me walrus and today i'm gonna be guiding you through some simple pointers and tips like very simple it's just goals that you need to be looking to hit prior to entering sumeru most likely if you want to get the most out of the contents that we are about to be offered here so if you enjoy genshin tips tricks guides drama coverage news memes i mean just everything genshin consider subscribing to the channel because i do genshin content every single day all right so the reason i'm making this video is because recently in discord and yes this could be you as well somebody has asked me to give some simple pointers to a friend of his when it comes to how they can proceed in the game uh this person is relatively new and they're just looking for things to do and a general sense of direction and thankfully i was able to give some very basic pointers which i think i hope were helpful and send them on their ways now this has got me thinking because a lot of the newer players right now i don't think they really understand what they're doing what's important what's not important and all the advices they usually come across are like oh this game is so easy you can beat the game with like chi chi main dps if you want it's very easy like i can do it with my eyes closed i think people tend to undersell the difficulty of genshin impact for a beginner player they just focus on the complete end game when you have an overabundance of resource like you have half of the characters already leveled 90 with cracked out artifacts for most of them yeah the game gets pretty easy but for people who are just getting into the game telling them you can play albedo main dps you can play toma dps with your eyes closed arms tied behind and you're back playing with your feet and chugging pure alcohol through your butt cheeks that's quite a bit misleading to say the least genshin is not so easy that anybody can just come in on any device with any internet connection under any circumstances and clear the game flawlessly without any trouble when people say the game is easy they're referring to if you have a properly built semi meta somewhat basic understanding of the game meaning you know who your on field dps is you know who your off field dps is and they're all properly built without some weird wacky offset like hu tao running thundering fury two piece and two piece noblesse with energy recharge sands and hydro goblet topped off with elemental mastery headpiece like it's not that brain dead okay so stop telling everybody that they can beat the game however they want just play however they like because guess what i've had people come to me like bro i am completely stuck i can't progress i wonder why take a look at their account oh wow you really took those advices quite literally so today i want to tell you guys something that you should be focusing on right now so first thing you want to do is you want to find an on-field dps it doesn't matter what ar you are like making sure that you are clear on who your on-field dps is is going to be very important i know this sounds like a uh, no duh but you can go quiz some people they really don't know what on field dps are from 
off-field DPS, they just like, oh, DPS is damage, right? Like anybody who does damage. But somebody that you can take anywhere on field, dealing damage, killing enemies. So this goes from like Arataki Ito to Kamisato Ayato, Yoimiya, Ayaka, Ganyu, Hu Tao. If you want to build Kaching, she's great as well. Now, the reason why I urge all the beginners to first focus on an on-field DPS is because this is the character that's going to be carrying through the majority of the early to mid game yes end game uh off field dps can start taking over there are a ton of great off field dps such as albedo yelan xing chu as well as Xiangling. however for the most part these character only become powerful because they can layer the damage with your on field dps what's the point of having a cracked out Xiangling dealing 12k per hit when your on field dps is doing 500 per hit it kind of defeats the purpose then you would just have Xiaoling be both the on-field and off-field members. You just have her as the on-field. Then it defeats the purpose of having her as an off-field carry, right? Because her strength lies in the fact that she doesn't even need to be on the field and she can deal massive damage. So that's why it's always beneficial to build your on-field carry first because you can never really utilize your off-field carries until your on-field carries are built. You get what I mean, right? Let's say you have a Raiden Shogun at level 20 with no artifact, with no weapon, or like a very basic weapon and then you have a level 90 Xiangling fully cracked out built what's the point of even having Raiden on field you're just gonna have Xiangling on the field so always 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 focus on your main or on field carry first now it's very easy to identify these carries there are tier lists there are videos if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments I'm sure people will help you out but some of the great ones that I want to point out right now chances are you might have these characters you might not have these characters all right I'm gonna point a couple out starting with the five stars we have Ganyu we have Hu Tao we have Ayaka, Yoimiya, Raiden Shogun, Arataki Ito, Kamisato, Ayato. We also have Zhao, we have Diluc, we have Kaching, and we have Klee, as well as Tartaglia. Uh, Tartaglia is a special case, but I would say if you really wanted to, you could play him as an on-field carry. It's fine. All right, now let's go into the four stars. First and foremost, we got the newest one, Hazel. There's a chance some of you guys might have him just from pulling for Kazuha. There's a chance you might have got him. You can run him as an on-field DPS. He's not bad. Followed by that, you have Yanfei. Granted, Yanfei needs to be around C4 if you really want to gain access to her at an optimal level however underneath that is okay for early to mid game you're gonna get by fine we also have characters like ningguang who could be considered an old schooled carry but she still works fine even nowadays as well as fischl fischl is actually a great one to build because she eventually can be flexed into many different roles making her a very valuable build because she can now serve you as an on-field dps but eventually she can also serve well as a support or off-field dps of course beto is a good choice i'm sure you guys have heard about her razor is a good choice but if you have to choose between the two i would honestly say beto is better because eventually you can flex her into other positions simply because of how her burst works meaning that she has more value per resource invested due to the fact that she has more flex due to the fact that she is more flexible in her role and the same same goes for Noel. However, really, I pick from the other options I mentioned here because they're going to serve you just better overall. All right. So with that out of the way, let's go into something else that I I, I think most people should know this, but you'd be surprised again that how, how many people suffer from this. All right. I don't want to tell you guys to rush the story, but I seriously suggest you to get Inazuma unlocked because at Inazuma, there are a couple weekly bosses that, uh, Let's just say it's it's going to be pretty important going forward when it comes to character talent materials. I mean, you're going to have to get here one way or another. And that's the Raiden Shogun one I just showed you. And the one over here is going to be the La Signora one. And of course, the one over here in Liyue is Ashdaha. So these three are important. I'm sure Ashdaha will come pretty quickly for most but uh yeah getting access to the inazuma weekly bosses are going to be important not just for eventually sumeru dropping but even if you want to prepare for sumeru characters it'd be wise to get yourself to this point 
as soon as you can and then from there on take your time there are no newer weekly bosses at least not yet until sumeru drops so that's going to be that okay and there are other things that you should be focusing on such as artifact grinding but i don't think that's a priority the real big thing is making sure your main and on-field dps is sufficiently built from that point on you can actually just branch out into whatever you want if you want to build like four on-field dps's go ahead you can slap them all on the same team it's fine because you're never really going to get stuck once you get to a point where you have hyper invested into multiple characters really i think that's the kind of advice that is more accurate to the Genshin experience. Now that's not to say you cannot beat the game with characters like Toma, Kuki Shinobu, Jin Yan, and whatnot. It's just going to be much much harder and oftentimes people who do end up beating the game with those characters knows the game inside out very well. They've tailored specific teams to make those characters work as well as multiple retries at the abyss challenge it's not something that anybody can just slap together close your eyes and beat the game with minimal effort that is simply not true and for everybody new to the game if you guys see people saying oh the game's dying the game's boring don't pay them much attention because i'd honestly argue that whatever stage you're going through genshin right now is probably like the golden stage you're at the point where everything still feels fresh you don't really know all the reactions you don't really know what all the characters do the meta whatnot and for the most part you're still waiting eagerly for new character banners or reruns that you've missed in the past so there's quite a bit to look forward to all right and with a new region on the horizon i'm sure a lot of you guys feel like you're getting in at just the right time and truth be told you actually are enjoy the content for what it has to offer and just make sure that you're doing these couple things that i mentioned in this video because beyond these two simple pointers i don't think there's much that needs to be said when it comes to the early and mid game of genshin impact now i've made videos in the past talking about the end game stuff just a little bit but if you guys want me to make a video before sumeru drops let me know in the comments and i'll do so all right so thank you guys for watching live streams tomorrow is probably going to be a little earlier so if you make it all the way to the end because i know most people who do tune into live streams do watch my videos at the end it's going to be a little earlier so this time maybe people from asia has a chance to join until tomorrow's live stream urge y'all to stay safe and peace peace